All right, so in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at these new scale look lowrider shocks from Red Cat. Let's get into it. Inside the box, what you get is the shocks and a few different spring options for, uh, you get two sets for the outside of the shock to change the, the look. So you either have the silver look or the gold look, and you get a few different springs for inside to basically adjust how the, the springiness of the shock is itself. There's two different types that you get in the box, one for the front and one with a special mounting setup for the rear. Uh, it's supposed to be put to a, an aluminum servo horn that is the same length as the original. But on the market, those servo horns like this one actually push the arm too far out. So further increases a problem that there is with these shocks. All right, so this kit right here, as you can see, uh, it's a ground up build. I'm taking spare parts and putting together an RC. I did not start with a, a rolling chassis, uh, the LR, um, LRH 285 or 286, 265, whatever it is. So usually, uh, it's not really typical for people to do their builds like this to start from the chassis. Here we are. Now, when putting the Red Cat shocks in, I ran into some problems. In the front, they went in perfectly. Zero issues with them on the front. There is a little bit of reduced throw compared to something like the, the scale look shocks that we use. So these are basically a pre-modified scale look shock. So we get a little bit more throw. We get a little bit more throw with the scale look shocks and that helps quite a bit when it comes to the hop, hop action. So I, I'm gonna have to do some further testing to see how good they hop despite that or whether or not the it will require some modifications to the uh, A-arm to get a little bit more travel in order to get a really good hop out of them, but they seem like they, they should work okay. The problem is in the rear, and that's why I'm going ahead and making this video right away without even doing any further hop testing on the front, because the problem in the rear is pretty serious. Now. Basically what I'm, I've done here is I've just put together the suspension. So when you put together the suspension like this, it should be free moving. There shouldn't be any point where it's binding or twisting the plastic or causing any kinds of issues. And in articulating the suspension, I ran into a serious problem with how the suspension moves. Now, once we get to about this point, where you have one side raised up and one side lower like we would do for a three-wheeling, what happens is, is there's flex inside the A-arm mounting point. As you can see, it's, I'm gonna try and get that focus there. As you can see inside the bracket, the arm is twisting. Now, the more the chassis lifts one side up and puts one side down, the more the angle of the shock is gonna have to be inside that bracket and where we're at right now is the maximum that you can go inside that bracket sorry the wire behind it go inside that bracket before it starts flexing the mounting point and there we go so now it's flexing the mounting point so we got flex over here on the serve uh, the the axle mounting point we have flex up over here on the plastic um a servo horn and it's trying to flex this as much as it can but as you can see it's at its maximum limit so if you keep on you know doing this all the time you have like a servo holding it like this so you're doing some three-wheel action and then you're like driving it so you're banging on that you're, you're basically going to snap the axle mounts off 
because it's as you can literally see it twisting the axle mount there to get freewheel. Now, a lot of people have put these into an RC that's already fully built. I'm guessing that's what was going on with the testing. People got sent out the, the shocks, they put it right into their RC, went ahead and did some testing. And what ends up happening is, when you put all the weight inside the car, the weight is gonna basically twist and flex the plastic enough to bring the RC down. But when you lift the rear end up, now the, the weight is no longer twisting everything. So the, the axle is gonna pop out to the point where it's not being twisted. And you put it back down, you're gonna see how much it goes down. It does that every time you, you take the weight off because the, that axle and, and servo horn are basically being flexed, twisted, to make that, to make the, the, the side go all the way down like that and for it to stay there. But as soon as you take the weight off, now we have it back up again. And it's just ridiculous. And it might not look like much, as soon as you take, I mean, this is basically right here, the maximum point. So, all that, is twisting you can see it it's twisting the mounting point on the axle that's in, in my opinion that's a design flaw it's a it's a serious design flaw that I can't use these shocks and I don't know if it's just my OCD or or what it is but I that's too much of a of an engineering flaw to run on my kit like it's it's i mean it's only going to really affect it when you're three-wheeling so maybe a lot of people aren't going to really care and they'll think how often do i three-wheel how often do i hold on it i can take a little bit of flex from it it's all good in my opinion i i can't do it i mean for me it's too much of a flaw for me to be able to run these shocks or or to recommend them so in my personal opinion i, I wouldn't put these on my rc I would just avoid them for, for the moment. Hopefully, uh, Red Cat does a, a, a V2 version and they fix the mounting situation. And uh, I mean, if, if that situation is fixed, I mean, I would definitely, the rest, of the, the rest of the shock, everything else about them is great and worthy of a recommendation. I mean, even the machining on the, the aluminum is great. One little kitch to them is they're a very big body compared to uh, what the shocks should look like inside a full-scale lowrider. So it's kind of out of scale. However, that's that could be literally overlooked if they functioned as good as, let's say, the, the, the original shocks. Because that's the problem here is the original shocks don't look scale at all, but they do function great. And the way they design it, they have a pivot, a pivot ball on the top to make sure that the, the shock has enough articulation ability and it doesn't get uh, binded up during the travel. This doesn't happen on a stock kit or uh, any one of my modified kits, as you'll see. I'll have that footage rolling in the background where I'm flexing one and flexing the other. So you can see that like this doesn't isn't supposed to be happening on these kits. So hopefully they they take that into account. They're not too mad at me for for not liking the product, despite other people's you know, fanboying over Red Cat or Red Cat pretending like it's it's not an actual problem. Um, I mean, I, I'm not going to bullshit my, my, I'm not going to bullshit my viewers. I'm not going to give people bad advice because that's, that's partially why I started this channel is to avoid, is to, to give people a source where they're not getting totally bad advice and someone's straight up with them. And I, I don't make nothing off of none of my parts. My channel, I get like like 80 bucks a month off this channel. So I'm not I'm not making money. Most of the stuff, most of the, the parts that I buy, they 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 cost way more than what I make on a month for this channel. <laughs> it's ridiculous. I mean, I've spent more in one month than I've made on the channel an entire year just on servos that 
for servo testing and whatnot. So it's not like I'm sitting here trying to make money off this. I don't sell any parts. I don't sell shocks. I don't do none of that stuff. So I'm not trying to shit on their stuff to, to sell my own. So it's, it's nothing like that. I'm just trying to provide a, a location where people are not getting full bullshit, where people are not getting uh, sold parts just because the person that's making the video gets sent free parts or gets a, a percentage of parts sold that, that go through the link of their video or some shit like that. I got, I do none of that. I get no sponsors. I barely make anything off this channel. Most of the cost is all out. Mo most of the cost is out of my pocket. So if I spend a thousand bucks a month, a hundred dollars of that thousand bucks is paid for from the channel. The other nine hundred out of pocket. I mean, uh. I do hope that they come out with a V2 version for these and that the, they do solve this problem there and that there's not there's no hard feelings over over me not liking these shocks and being straight up about it, man. It's, I'm not going to tell people these are good shocks to run because that's too much of an issue in the back. However, like I said, if it's not a problem for you, you don't think that's enough of an issue to keep you from using them, that's fine. But at the end of the day... No one is going to tell me that these are not flawed. Simple as that. Alright, so with that, man, uh, please do like, subscribe, and share. Have yourself a good day, and I'll see you in the next one.